Francis, we're all very impressed by this beautiful sculpture, and uh, great thanks to Sir Derek Jacobi. But when you are sculpting people who can sometimes be difficult subjects, not at all our current subject, of course, who's a great pussy cat, but do you find your positive mental attitude can be imparted to them and helps you to overcome their uh, impatience sometimes? Okay. Yes, I have had people. No, yes, I know. <laughs> I've had some such difficult people that I've had to really, I haven't had any time to get my positive mental attitude in. But, um, and they've not been too bad. Like, for instance, I had somebody came over from Australia and he he was, you know, obviously his time thing was so difficult. And he used to walk around the studio all the time. I couldn't get to sit down. So, yes, those been very difficult ones. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Right, someone else. I think, yes, lady. And um, what is the most um, expressive part of the face for you? What is the bit you have to get right? Is there a, a piece? All of it. All of it. Every bit. Right. Yeah. Did, did everybody hear that question? It was, it was basically which part of the face. But I think you've answered that. Okay, and gentlemen here. If there's a microphone coming. Thank you. Thank you. see, this is Derek. What was going through your mind when you were sitting there? Because you've got to sit still, you can't concentrate, you've got all these faces looking at you. What, what is yes, that? Yeah, that, that, I, that I think is the most difficult. Um, when I was allowed to close my eyes, <laughs> um, that, that was fine because I could go off somewhere. You know, I could meditate or go into Zen and all that. And that, was, that was fine. But uh, to keep my eyes open, of course, I often actually eyeball something. That, 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 embarrassing for them, and for me. So I had to defocus, uh, and I hope it, it doesn't look defocused, but um, I had to defocus and look somewhere in the middle distance. But yes, you are, you, you do feel you're kind of on show, you know, and there's nothing you can do about it, because um, Frances is the one that is the expert. She's doing what she does, and she's doing it brilliantly, I'm just a mug sitting there. <laughs> but it's been a wonderful experience. I've loved it. <coughs> I think those of, those of you who are there right at the beginning must be depressed with the fact that uh, the Derek did actually close his eyes and uh, it was for about 40 minutes. And it was a stunning thing that happened because I think one or two people who were involved in the stage said, this is part of stage experience, and this must have been a great help to him, because it was, so that those of us outside the immediate atmosphere, there was lots of oh's, 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 oh's. <laughs> Okay, yes, indeed, gentlemen at the front. To Sir Derek, yes. when you're learning lines for a new production, yes. do you have a special trick that is unique to yourself for memorizing the uh, dialogue? Or um, is this something which is used by lots of actors? No, learning lines is so um, basic to an actor. Um, uh, we, we were talking earlier about this, um, that it's, 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 it's a knack. It's, it's, kind of, it's something that is natural. It's something so basic for an actor to have to do. If, if I attempted to become a carpenter and attempted to knock a nail in this piece of wood, it would bend. But for a carpenter, it's it's that's what we do. That is, you know, that's part of the basics of our trade. Well, learning, learning lines for um, upstage by our wine glass. Uh, <laughs> learning lines for actor is, is you know part part of the course. And I personally try to learn my lines before I start rehearsing, so that rehearsals don't become about learning lines. Um, they become about why you're saying the lines, where they came from, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what is your reaction to the line that somebody else said before it. So that I learn the lines in a kind of um, power fashion, like a, like a tape recorder, with no intonation, not particularly any meaning. They are the words. And um, during the course of the rehearsal, I find out what they mean, where they come from, uh, what I'm trying to convey, what I'm feeling, where I am. Um, but the words are just just the, the, the bedrock of, of what we do. And I've um, been very lucky in my, in my life in that I started as a kid with, with, with a sort of photographic memory. 
Um, it, it ain't like that now, but um, it's still pretty good. Um, so learning lines is never a problem. Thank you. Two questions from the gentleman here, but can we take one to Francis, which is, is are you doing anything, Francis, other than heads at the moment, or would you like to do designs, which I think you started to do some time ago? Francis. Um, yes. Um, I, I have had a few projects children in the last few years, so <laughs> I feel like I've had them, but I'm sure my daughter <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't see enough of me, so probably doesn't think that, but it has been hectic, and I haven't been able to produce as much, so I'm just going from head to head, and um, I'm doing Prince Charles at the moment, which is really exciting, very, very exciting. Going there, it's fantastic. Um, and then, you know, when I when I come back, I'm probably, I haven't got that much energy after going to see the kids that I've produced all this other stuff, but one day I hope. That. Okay, yeah. sorry, gentlemen here. And then the lady will be doing So, Derek, um, in order of preference, if you would please, uh, TV, film, or stage? Stage! Stage! <laughs> stage. <laughs> stage. <laughs> Yes, and uh, my, my heart and my love is, is, is theatre. Um, be, basically, because the actor's in charge, and anything to do with the camera, um, you are surrounded by safety nets. In the theatre, you have no safety net. If anything goes wrong, um, you will see it, you will hear it. Um, that's what makes it exciting and terrifying at the same time. In any studio, be it television or film, uh, you're surrounded by the, the safety nets of microphones. If you forget it, you do it again. Um, so it's, it's very safe. You're looked after, you're fed, you're watered, you're made up. You, everything is done for you. You've just got to learn it and do it and, and behave in front of the camera. Theatre is a great, very different experience. And the actor is making all those creative, uh, artistic choices that in, in a film or a television, somebody else is making, the director, the editor, they are making the choices that d define what you ultimately see. Yeah. On the stage, I make those choices. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lady? Yeah. Yes, good evening. Um, a question for Francis. Um, sometimes when people do paintings, they paint them so that if they're seen from afar or you're below them, there are different tricks. When you're sculpting, are you aware beforehand where the commission may be positioned? And do you are you obviously creating it to take those surroundings? Yes, very much so. Um, with a life-size head, I'm so used to doing them. So, but, so I know more or less, you know, what it's going to look like when it's in position. But it has to be eye level. So the head would be uh, positioned at that height, and I'm used to that. So that. You know, I probably do it automatically, but when I, when I was doing a large, very large sculpture, you know, you're looking up, it's a very big piece, so the hands at the top were bigger, so that they make it look bigger, otherwise it would sort of go a distance too much. Um, yeah, so it's very important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd like to ask um, Sir Derek, have you got a, a fond memory or anecdote of your time when you worked at the National Theatre when it was at the Old Vic yes. under Sir Laurence Olivier? Um, <laughs> yes, I, 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 was there for, I was there for eight years. With Sir Laurence. Um, yeah, I suppose my very first memory was the very first production, uh, which was the, um, the opening night was uh, Hamlet, Peter O'Toole playing Hamlet, um, Sir Laurence directing. I had been done to understudy <coughs> Jeremy Brett, uh, who was going to play Laertes. Um, fortunately for me, Warner Brothers bought Jeremy Brett out to play Freddie Ansford Hill in My Fair Lady. Uh, so instead of um, putting a, 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 another star, as Jeremy was, into the role, they upped his understudy. So I, my first role with the National was Laertes to a tools Hamlet. The night we opened happened to be my 25th birthday. And uh, afterwards, because it was the opening night of the National Theatre, all the glitterati were there. And 
they gave a party in the auditorium and on the stage. And I was going around boring the ass of everybody, <laughs> saying, you know, this is the best night of my life. I've just played Red People who stand up to Red Bull said, it's my 25th birthday. And I was doing, working the room, saying this, until um, suddenly um, silence was called for. And as I said, all the glitter and were there. And on the stage, um, starting Happy Birthday to You with Shirley Bassey. So, <laughs> that was a great memory.